Uh, these are called pig mats. They're oil absorbent pads. Okay, they're perforated, so they normally come like this. You will tear off a piece. All you need is one. Okay. Um, okay. Cool. Uh, so that's what we'll have. Sorry, I'm just stacking those up. And, uh, Parking that up. And we got that and that. Okay, I think I got everything I need. Let's see how fast we can tear this apart. Got the gloves in, by the way. Oh. Ten boxes, hundred in each box. Uh, they're large. <laughs> they're a little tight on me. <laughs> but I wasn't going to buy smalls, mediums, larges, extra larges, because that was nearly $200 there. Okay, I'm going to call out these parts uh, quickly on the disassembly, but I will call them again when we assemble it, okay? And I'll be more methodical at that point. This, I'm just calling them out. So if you catch it, it's good. You can, you know, put it in little corner notes, but like I said, we'll do it mostly on the build, because that's what you have to do. All right, so this is a flywheel nut, 19 millimeter wrench is used. And it's normally not that loose. That's a bad sign. Okay, now we'll uh, take that off, and I need. And the sizes I'm giving you is not the size of the tool, or sorry, the size of the bolt, but the size of the wrench needed. So that'll be clarification. I'll show you that right now. So I'm using an eight millimeter socket. And. So this is the magneto right there. This is, come on, turn on, there we go. We got my calipers. This is actually, it should be six. So it says 5.8, but it would be a six millimeter by 25. Right. There's two of those. I'm trying to stay on view here. Second one, Magneto, it's missing, it's wired. Go find me another, you're gonna be doing a lot of running, so go find me another Magneto that has the grounding cable, please. Okay, this is where I needed the pig mats, but I don't know if there's still oil in here. None came on the disc stick, but that doesn't mean that. All right, so we have four head bolts that we're gonna take off. Um, two up here at the top, two down there. Those are 13 millimeter. You want to do a crisscross pattern? And those were definitely not tight enough. That's why this engine didn't run. Every nut and bolt has a torque specification, meaning how tight they're supposed to be. Sticky, a meeting next Wednesday, okay? Yep, because that's an early out. Yep. Do decide. It's early out, that's why I figured that would be right after school. Yeah. Meeting. Thank you. Oh. Yeah. Oh, there we go. I was worried that it didn't have a head gasket that's sitting on this side. So head gasket. All right, let's just assemble the valve for the head here. Okay, so what popped off is these are called push rods. They were sitting up through here. It sits on there on the valve rockers. This one's missing a clip already, so I can pull that out. I love it when kids put engines together. 
So this, oh, look, was already torn. That is a E clip, looks like an E, okay, on this pivot. This one's missing, and Dickie, you want to grab me a standard screwdriver, please? Actually, yeah, could you please? I don't have one here. Uh, to remove the valve here, what we're going to do is we're going to take this little top piece off, okay? And then we're going to push down, and this one's towards me. There's a little slot right there for you. So this is the valve peep. That's a little oval there, and that's where you slide it to. Okay, and then the valve comes out. That is the exhaust valve. Don't get them mixed up. There is a difference. Waiting for the screwdriver. Much better, thank you. This is going to go on one of the go-karts so we can test it out. Thank you. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and take the other keep out. There's no sense to take this keep off. Just take the one on the outside out. That way it slides this way. So I'm going to rotate that. Now these do like to fly out just like that. Okay, find it. <laughs> you saw where it went. Thank you. Well, you should wear safety glasses. There you go. Okay, remove the paper spring and cap and intake valve, exhaust valve. There is a difference. Okay, so be aware of that. It's easier to tell there. Okay. All right, that's the head. That's what we'll tear it down to. Now on to the block. And these are 10 millimeter. Same thing, we're going to dip around, being aluminum, you don't want to bend up the block. I also chose this block, we didn't have RTV around the back uh, seal, back cover is what this is called. By the way, all of the stuff I'm telling you is on the state test. We have this week. This week is not that. Okay, so now I'm ready to crack the case. I want to be careful where I'm going to pry. If I go off of here, I could potentially break one of these bins. So be aware of that. Uh, this is a nice spot because it's not a ceiling surface. You don't want to come in here and start wrenching on it because you'll cut into the ceiling surface, which is not a good idea. Okay. So well, covers off, gasket, I'm going to actually order those, camshaft, tap it, oh look at that cover, another tap it, now probably the hardest part is the piston, so let's go ahead and pull that out, because I noticed some of my pistons were missing some of the oil rings. So this is 10 millimeter. This is probably the slowest part of the whole thing is these two little bolts right back here because it's hard to reach and they're sharp edges. Okay, so that one, that one. That's where it sucks because you can't get a ratchet in there.
No Jeopardy sounds? Come on, guys. You know it's Friday. Hey. I can get the cow out. We got the cow still. I'm like, quite what I was looking for, but okay. Ugh. I'll warn you now, what I'm fighting with is this right here is a really sharp edge. So I could reach in and do this, but then it wants to slice right here. So be aware of that. What the heck is that? <laughs> is it, oh, now I hear it. The first intro part didn't sound right. One part is the, uh, this is getting onto YouTube, so that means I'll get kicked for uh, copyright infringement. <laughs> My intro video that has a uh, copyright free song in it got hit. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody claimed it. <laughs> All right. So, this is what you'll end up with. You'll probably go in whatever block you have, you're going to tear it down to this. The piston, okay, good. But they didn't do one thing. So, we have a compression ring, a compression ring, and then we have three parts to the oil ring. We have a top, what's called a waffle in the middle. And then a bottom ceiling ring, okay? What happened is you want to make sure that these two rings are separated. See, there's a gap here, so that way we can put it on. But both these gaps are almost right next to each other. So we want them 180. So I want to just turn that one. All right? And then I'm going to look at my oil rings. Okay, there's a gap right there for one of the oil rings. That's not near any of the compression. And there's another one on the opposite side. So there we go. So all those gaps, you don't want them lined up because that means one oil can come all the way through all those gaps or compression, go past it, and you lose compression. Okay? I'm going to wipe this down a little bit. All right. So let's look inside and see what we need to add. On the guts. This is your governor wheel, okay? Inside there, it is missing the governor nipple and washer. I don't think I have any. Okay, I guess you're off to go find a governor nipple and washer. <laughs> Just find a block that has a governor and has a white plastic piece on the top here. I don't see one in my box. I see a new kit, buddy. All right, let's see if I have some over here. There's a governor that's been broken out. Oh, I moved it. That's oh, here. Ah, oh, suck. Oh, here's another part of the governor. Ah, oh, suck again. Well, it's missing. All right, so we'll wait for that. The other one we need is this piece. That one's jacked up. That's the one we're using. That's part of it. This is the uh, oil sending unit. It tells the engine if it has too low of oil or if you turn, that oil will slide to the side and your engine won't start or it will kill out. So uh, your guys' engines will have these because that way we don't accidentally start it without oil. Um, this has a little flat spot on one side that goes to the back of the block. This gets threaded just like this. Okay. So, 
oil sensor. And then those use. Okay, the oil sender unit is, there it is, sorry, now here's your first one for you, oil sender, two bolts, they are six millimeter by 25, okay, now is that the wrench I would use, six millimeter? No, it won't. Be an eight millimeter wrench. Eight millimeter wrench, but it's a six millimeter bolt. Because when we measure bolts, we measure them at the thread or shank, not the bolt head. Siggy, okay. can you get me one of those quarter inch um, fork wrenches that we were using for hot rubbers? They should be in the filing cabinet for all the hot rubber parts. Oh, it isn't that size. Scratch that. Okay, so it's still a six millimeter bolt, but it is only uh, 15 millimeters tall. So six millimeter by 15 millimeter is an eight millimeter wrench. Sorry, didn't mean to mess you up. I know, if you were using your Chromebook, you could just backspace it until you had the right one. But you know what? We're going to move that. Wi-Fi uh, hotspot in December. So don't worry, we'll be no time at all. You know, they work real fast around here for us. Thank you. Every fastener has a torque. Uh, probably a three eighths. Well, so I'm gonna set this down to, this is an inch pound. So we're going to go to 60 inch pounds and see where we go. A little extension. Like that. Okay. So we tighten that to 60 inch pounds. Okay, the next one is a the nut for the oil sender for the wire. This is a flanged nut. Okay, and it goes to a here, what size is that? Ten millimeter. So ten millimeter flanged nut. There's only four nuts in this whole thing. And you'll use a 14 millimeter wrench. Okay. 
You just grab a couple blocks and bring them over here. Okay, so we got the sending unit for oil sensor. Now we're just waiting for the pieces from the governor. Now the governor shaft coming down. Here's a little trick on the governor. That's a nipple. Yeah. Little stupid washer. That's a little black washer. Oh, I got one. Yep, lucky. All right, thank you. Don't worry, I'll be keep sending you back. <laughs> All right, so, uh, oh, on the governor, make sure this line, this cut groove, is in line with this opening on here. That will help you, oh, well, let me get it in camera, help you on setting the governor so it doesn't surge, okay? On the governor itself, now that I threw those pieces away. We're gonna move that out of the way. We have the shaft down there. And I'm gonna slide the washer. It's a black, very thin washer that has to be on there. If not, the nipple will stick and you will have some problems with surging with the engine. And then here's the governor nipple. There it goes on just like that. So that when the engine over revs, and this is the reason why we do it on this, is because if the engine over revs, it can explode. Yes, you may. Uh, so we, won't, we don't want our engines exploding, okay? So we will keep them in there. All right, so that's set, that's set. So now we're gonna set, install the piston. And that's it. There it is, okay? Everything's still good there. Uh, we have the piston. Leave? Ring, ring depression, thank you. And we got assembly loops. So, well that's. Just mixing it up. Let's get more. There we go. Okay, so we get some of the assembly lube. We're going to coat the inside of this piston chamber or the bore. Okay, next we're going to lube up the ring compressor. And if the lube sits on there too long and it doesn't get broken down with motor oil, it gets sticky and we don't want that. So I'm moving this around until it feels slippery on the hand. Okay, same thing on the piston skirts. Get some more. Okay. And then on this one, the piston, the arrow goes down. Let's we'll set that there. Then we got the ring compressor, which uses a quarter inch nut driver to set. I'm holding the back of the piston so it doesn't go down. Let's open it up more. Oh, I need a hammer. Sorry, I realized I didn't grab one. Now I'm going to set this over here. Sure. Hopefully not too many. Okay, so now I've compressed the rings, okay, by tightening this up. If this doesn't hold tight, there's a little screwdriver bit right here, standard screwdriver, you can tighten up the uh, piece. So this one's holding. Ooh, the little one. All right, let's see if I can get this in one shot. So we don't want to use this because this edge right here will catch here. So you grab the hammer like this and use the bottom of the hammer to push in. And you go, usually you can do one fluid smooth in or you can just smack it in like that. 
I mean, guess what just happened? Yeah, no crankshaft, but that's fine. I, I usually install the crankshaft afterwards. But um, <laughs> oh, screw this. I haven't rotated anything. There's right on through. All right, you know what? We'll solve that problem. We'll put the crankshaft in. Crankshaft, you want to install the side with the narrow gear. And when you install this, you also want some assembly lube. So here, here, and there. This one I'm going to smear around. And this one. This one it doesn't need it yet. So these are called journals. This is your flywheel journal. Okay, that's your crank journal. And then this is your PTO journal. Okay. Slide that in with the smaller gear all the way down. I'm going to set the crankshaft the best I can with the counterweights towards the bore of the block. Okay. And then let's try putting the piston in again. Arrow down. No, I think I'm good. Thanks, though. They're mocking me because in one of our programs, we used to tear that engine down. You have to yell out certain things to the judge to hear you. And if you don't do it right, you dock time. And uh, if we had a winning time, which we did, and we were invited to go to SEMA, but they canceled SEMA. Yeah, we'll get the jackets. All right, so let's try this again. Ah, oh, got robbed. That's what usually happens. This is why I don't like it. Yeah. Worked great the first time, right? Every time you don't have a successful installation, pull it out, verify that none of the rings have gotten bent. Okay? Because if you go putting in bent rings, you owe me a new engine. All right, what's the third attempt? Watch, this time we'll go all the way through again. Okay. So now I'm going to wipe off all this excessive lube here on the top of the piston and away from where the head gasket sits. Okay. Now I'm going to install the crankshaft. Okay, I'm going to rotate the block and have it mate up with the Come on. There we go. Now I'm pushing down the piston with my fingers here and guiding it. Now you got to be very careful. This is where you talk, you know, talk about pinch points and your hand getting stuck in the things. Um, because trying to remove that pinch point and your hand stuck in there. Takes a little while, okay? So be careful what you're pinching. So like that would have been nasty. So I'm rotating this until I have space with the counterweights up here. And this way I can put in what's called the oil dipper. This comes down, dips in the oil, and splashes it up behind the piston and around the crankshaft and camshaft, okay? I'll just check this for any wear, and then I'll put some lube back on it.
Most of these engines haven't ran for more than five minutes collectively, so. All right, some assembly lube. Install, there we go. All right, so now we have the two bolts for that. They're also six millimeter. These are the easiest ones to spot in your tray. They're the only ones that are black. Um, so they're six millimeter by Thirty-two. Okay. So I'm just getting one in, got it through a couple turns, and then I put the other one in. Can you guys go look on that whiteboard, tell me what the torque specifications are for this? The torque specs for the connecting rod? Or take a picture of it with your phone, because I want to ask you a lot of them. Oregon did that a while ago, and I want to laminate it so that way it doesn't get erased. Okay, so I'm going to use a 8 millimeter wrench. Oh, no, these are 10 millimeters, sorry. If I remember right. Okay, thank you. Okay. So 80 inch pounds. I'm going to make sure that the torque wrench I have is in inch pounds and not feet. You don't want 80 foot pounds. And you want to work your way up to it. So the last one I did was 60. I'm going to go down to 30. Click, click, now I'm going to go to 50, Ready? Okay. Most of the torques on that board back there are uh, about 20 pounds or inch pounds less. Okay, so I've installed the oil dipper, sending unit, the nut there, the governor and its nipple. So we're all set for the last few pieces that go in here. Then we can close the case. So next thing is the camshaft. When we go to measure the camshaft, you have to measure the rise and the dead. Okay, so you'll measure both of those on both of them. And you'll have to tell me which one's which, which one's the intake, which one's the exhaust, the guards. But before we put this in, we have to put in the tappets. Which went somewhere. The tappets are different, so I do actually. I'm not going to tell you. No, I don't. <laughs> 180. <laughs> okay. No. 
I can measure it out. I got tools here. They kept all those machining tools. That's part of blueprinting it. All right, so I put on some assembly lube. Now I'm sliding in the tappets. There's one, two, okay? And now I'm going to put the camshaft in. Camshaft, I'm going to lube up right here and on each of the lobes and a little here, okay? You guys want to check the gas? Well, that's not good. That's all right. You know, we've had lines that pop, so that's when that pop happens. It's up to have a hold down the engine while it blows up. <laughs> okay. Uh, tap it. Oh, yeah, I'm on the camshaft. So now I'm just spreading the grease around. Okay, so what do I have to have installed before I put this in? The tappet, thank you. That's on the state test. Okay, the next thing I need to verify is the cam timing. Okay, let's uh, go ahead and get started with the giggles. We have a dot here on the female side, and we have a dot here on the male side. Okay, thank you. Immature. And now, and this is a helix cut gear, meaning it's slotted in an angle. So when you drop it down, make sure that you have a matching. Because if you're off by one tooth, this will not run very well. We get it to start. There we go. Okay. And at this point, you would have me come over and verify the installation of those. Put a little more on there. Okay. And then we'll put on the back cover gasket. This is missing a pin. Oh, it's on the side. 
this little pin, it's called a centering pin, it will help center the back cover on the place. Okay, and now I have how many? One, two, three, four, five, six bolts. Six. And they are. Oh. Uh, seven millimeter by. 30 and you'll use a 10 millimeter wrench um every year but they did it at the end of the school year so i'm good until the end of school year all right what's the torque specifications for the back cover Yes. Okay. Ten foot pounds. I want to write that down too. I don't know why I didn't put home. I have a all right, so that's 10 millimeters. That's true. So uh, today's Friday. That means I will see you guys on Tuesday and Thursday. So Tuesday... If you are done with your things, meaning if you have an A in my class, you're working. If you don't, you're sitting out, and uh, you can tell how exciting it is right now by sitting out. Yep. Well, yeah, because I'll see them on Monday, and that's when they get told. All right, so now I'm going to grab my torque wrench. You said 100, inch, 100 foot pounds? Yeah. Oh, I need a better torque wrench. Okay. Uh, maybe. <laughs> These are uh, what's called a clicking wrench, even though you can't hear it. The, yeah, that's kind of feel for it. <laughs> and whose fault was that? <laughs> now, why do I want a gasket on here? Oh, I did a gasket. Well, maybe if you did, maybe if you cleaned the head properly, you wouldn't have a problem. Oh, <laughs> uh, uh, damn super All right, so I've uh, I have it dot to dot on the cam. Do not move the engine. Don't rotate it because that puts the piston at top dead center. Okay, and you'll feel the rotation as it comes to the full peak because that's where we need to set our valve timing. Okay, so we got our head. This one's already put together, so I'm not going to put the other one together. No sense, that's stupid. This is a uh, Hemi head, domed. Ooh, I'm putting a Hemi on here. Exciting, right, guys? Uh, head gasket now. The head gasket does have a direction, and it's kind of funny watching people put this on. If, let's see if you can catch the wrong direction. Yeah, you know how many times I've taken an engine apart because they're like, it's not working right. 
Did you tighten this? Did you do this? Do this? Oh yeah, yeah, I did that. I did that. And then I take it apart and find that this was just put on backwards. So make sure it's on the right direction. These also have guide pins, which this one's missing it. That one's missing it. I don't have any. I don't think I have any in here either. No. Oh well. So we'll use a bolt. Okay, so the head bolts are. I wish I'd stop putting this in random places. Eight millimeter by sixty millimeters, and you will use a twelve millimeter right uh, socket. Okay, so I'm gonna drop that bolt into place. That there. Okay, I need uh, feeler gauges. It is a eight millimeter bolt by sixty millimeters, and you use a twelve millimeter wrench. I showed him how to use one machine. Monday, that's what I'm doing. They'll be working Wednesday and Friday. I'll need to know what feeler gauge to use. Which feeler gauge to use. Let's go to uh, Harbor Freight's website, look up the manual. Or you can go grab one from the back. Whoops, that's the wrong side. What's the torque for the head? Yeah. 10 foot pounds? Yeah. That doesn't seem right. Google it. I don't think that's right. I know the blue gloves are more than anything. The 212 Predator, Harbor Freight. Got the threads lined up. It's actually thread in. Shut up, Jake. Stop laughing at me. It hurt my feelings. Huh? Huh. Okay. How much time do I have left? Yeah. Oh, crap. What pound? Yeah. That sounds about right. Yeah. Okay. 17. What pounds it is? Us. Oh, it hurt it there. Okay, right, that's set. All right, now we're going to take the push rods. We're going to push them down into the block, and we got to make sure that it sits on top of the tappet. There's a little cup right there. we got to make sure it sits right on it so we can set the right valve timing. If we put it to the side, this will go up and down and no valve control. Okay. Okay. And because the springs are already there, what I'm doing is I'm pushing down on the spring to give me that space 
drop the uh, push rod behind the rocker. Okay. Okay, both of those are in, so now let's set the feeler gauge. Okay. So this should slide in and have a little resistance, and there's a lot of gap there, a lot of gap there. So what you'll need is a nine millimeter wrench. Thought I had one. Hey guys, I need a nine millimeter wrench. No, they don't. I thought I grabbed it and brought it over here because I knew I didn't need it. It's all your fault, Jay. It did. It's like, you know, normally it's a 10 millimeter that does that. That's an odd number, by the way, is a nine millimeter wrench, but I need a nine millimeter wrench for what? To set the valve timing. So I'm gonna loosen this. And now I can turn that. I need a crescent wrench. Now I'm just turning this tiny little wrench head, bolt head. So what we want on a feeler gauge, you want to be able to pinch this and pull. You should be able to feel that basic resistance, not where I'm fighting it. Okay, that's hence its name, feeler gauge. You're feeling the measurement. Okay. And the odd part is everybody will feel it differently. So you have to be aware of that. I found nine. I do need a uh, crescent wrench or adjustable wrench, please. Yeah. I'm using something a little better than this. Here's what I have for you. Okay, another thing is you don't want to come from the top because the head kind of interferes. So I'm coming through on the side here. One time you get to use a crescent wrench in my shop. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of keep my eye on that angle. Tighten down this, which is a nine millimeter nut. And double check my measurement. Good. Now the other side. Now, could I have a good accurate reading if I rotated the block? Hey guys, you're getting a little too distracting. Now I have to make sure that the dot to dot is still set. Okay, that's good. Now on to some other parts. Uh, let's go flywheel. 
So, flywheel. Make sure that the key is in. You want to make sure that the key way matches up. You don't want to put it on separate because one, the magnet right here has to meet up with the magneto. So this is an armature. This is the magneto to create the spark. It has to meet up at the right time with the valve timing. So if you don't have that in the right spot, one, you'll crack the uh, flywheel, and two, your engine will not run. That didn't sound good. There is something loose inside there. I guess we're not going to get it running today. All right, I'll put the flywheel on real quick, and then we'll open it back up again. What did I mess up? I'm curious now. The starting cup and flywheel have pins that line up. Then we have the large nut. And we use the impact gun after we've hand threaded it. Right. So now we're going to set the magneto. And there is two tricks about it. Because I don't have a dollar bill, I'll use a business card. So we're going to set the, I'm going to actually set the magnet up. I think that's what fell out. I think the mag, uh, governor. Okay, and I'm going to set the business card on top, and then I'm going to rotate this. So now the magnet is pulling the magneto into place, and then I'm going to use the bolts for the magneto. That is the six millimeter by. Twenty-five. Okay. What's the magneto torque? You would use a eight millimeter wrench. Oh, okay. Oops. Realize I set that magneto upside down. And it's the wrong one. That's the one I want. I want the kill wire so that way I can turn the engine off. Especially if there's a problem. Okay, so the magneto, the spark wire goes to the top. Any luck yet? Okay. I'm going to say it's in inch pounds. And I'm going to start with, well, I was going to say 10. Lowest setting, there we go, 10. I might actually go to 20 because that's the lowest it goes. All right, a little more than that. <laughs> 35. Okay. Take my business card out or my dollar bill. Now I can install the spark plug. I want to double check, make sure the gap on the spark plug is properly set. I'll make you guys look that one up. I'm not going to tell you that. And in the toolbox, you have what's known as a spark plug socket. It has a little rubber boot inside there that helps protect spark plug ceramic. 
And no, we can't throw them at windows. We'll throw tools around, please. Okay, that's set, that's set. Okay. Spark plug wire on. Okay, valve covers next. The the uh heavy heads have these and I'm looking for a head gasket. Or I shouldn't say head gasket, valve cover gasket. Alright, yes. Sure, you wanna go find me a valve cover gasket? Thank you. All right, so we'll, I don't know if we'll find one. All right, so we got that, that. All right, let's go intake side. So we need this little plastic thing, which has a gasket that goes on here. Also has a gasket material. Okay, so it will be green or it's black, but you'll notice it has four holes. One, two, three, four. Okay, so this one's a black one. This is a green one. I'm just going to leave this on so I don't have to peel it off. This goes on first. Okay, goes that way. And then there's a gasket before that. There's a paper gasket that has three holes. It has a D on it. Okay, the D lines up with the D on the intake. Okay, so how many gaskets do I have so far? Two. Which one was first? The paper one, which looked like a D. Okay, followed by the plastic, and then a green one or one with four holes. And then we have the carburetor. Okay, followed by the manifold or uh, intake gasket. That's the metal one. It lines up with this opening up here in the carburetor okay and then we have the intake manifold or not intake manifold the air filter okay that would go here but we're not quite ready for that i need the throttle control all right jay go find me throttle control we're stuck on those two pieces while they look for that let's look but i messed up is ready to figure out what i broke There's one of those, uh, hand oh, no, that's a uh, non-hemi. So, Gilan, do you want to help Jay find a throttle control? Thank you. All right, what do you guys want to take bets on? It's the uh, governor nipple that fell off. Any guesses? Somebody? Somebody just want to play on your phones? And it was! That is exactly it. Thank you very much. Oh, this one's missing. There should be a nut on there. And just grab about four of them. All right. This is the hard part now that most of these pieces are in here. I'm going to take the gasket off. I don't tear that. Oh, there it went. Huh? Uh, the, you, you weren't paying attention? It hurt. Why did, well, what happened was most likely this governor arm, which isn't spring loaded right now, uh, moved out of the way, which gave it enough room for the nipple to fall off. Lightly magnetized screwdriver is working good for me. I'm actually going to put some grease on there that will hopefully kind of glue it into place. 
doesn't say glue. It's not it's supposed to move. Huh? Yeah, that's up, yeah. There we go. All right. That's much better. I'll put the gasket back on. You guys, remember what was the torque for the uh, side cover? You guys should have this written down. That's the pounds. Awesome. Oh, shit. Gotta move the push rods out of the way. That way, the top is all the way down. And I need to make sure what's what. Yep. Ah! It's rattling. Oh, okay, it's those. Ah, come on. There we go. Okay. Now the cover. Gasket. Why we have the other pin. What was it again? Then foot pounds? There's a huge difference between inch pounds and foot pounds. Now we're back to where we are, waiting for throttle control. How's it coming? I need the throttle control. That's the wrong nut. Wait. Ah, there wasn't any more. There's lots of them.
All right, off your phones. Stop chit chatting. Back to my turn. All right, throttle control. The reason why I want this on first. So that way I could set up all the other pieces that are needed. The throttle control is held down by two little smaller ones, which is six millimeter by nine. Okay, so there's one that threads up here and one down here. And you will use an eight millimeter socket on it. Okay, this one's jacked up. I gotta this leave for that. Best. All right, well, put the towels on it. Since we can run with that one. Threads on this one's messed up, so I have to go to one tool. Okay, that's on, that's on, that's on. This is on. So now we need the governor springs rod. Okay. You will need a thicker spring and a thin spring. And you'll also need a rod. Like this one, the thin spring goes on that. Okay, this one goes in to the middle. On the other arm, we're going right there. Okay, and then this rod. All right, spot. No, I'm not. That's where the spring goes. Secondary. This one goes here. Sorry. Then it goes away over here on the carburetor. This little spring goes in here. Come on. Maybe. There we go. And then goes to the second hole on this one. And then the stiffer spring, the bigger one, is the one that goes from the middle and it goes up. Goes up under here. There's a little pinhole on the throttle arm that you'll attach it to. I don't want to do that. All the way over to this one. Okay, that's in, that's in, that's in, that's in. Okay, those are in. Next would be the exhaust. And then you'll have an exhaust gasket. Now, it looks a lot like the carburetor gasket, but please don't mix them up. This one's paper, it has a D. This one has material on it to prevent it from catching on fire. But it also has a D. So please get the one that is not paper. Okay, so those are on. So now I just need the carburetor nuts. One. You will use a 13 millimeter wrench on these nuts. So that's the exhaust nuts. What size wrench? 13. Okay, there, 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 and there. Now I'm going to push the push rods back into place. No.
Okay, that's in, that's in, that's in. I'm going to now take the cutoff. This is where we're going to pause for the day and we'll finish it up on Tuesday, right? That slides down into those little grooves. And there we go. And that's where we'll finish for today. And we'll pick this back up on Tuesday. So that way you guys can put all your engines back together. Hopefully I'll be done. Please don't lose that paper. You'll need it. You have to do this just a safety test? Yeah. Yeah. If that's where you're missing on the points, yeah. Yeah, make sure you get the uh, safety test and the disclosure done. I can't actually have you in the shop until then.